So I'm going to do some more examples of using fundamental identities to find values of trig functions. I did this in my fundamental identities video, and I'm going to do two more examples, the ones that you see here. Now, just in case you wanted to recap, um, I'm going to go ahead and just flash all the, the fundamental identities here. You can pause the video if you want to write any of them down, if you were just looking for one place to find them all. So those are going to be the identities that help us get through these two examples. So let's let's get to it. Okay, so for the first example, I've got cosecant of theta equals negative 5 over 2, and I'm told that theta is in quadrant 3. Now, maybe it would just be good to think about in quadrant 3, which functions are positive. So the only functions that are positive in quadrant 3, all students take calculus. So the ones that are positive will be tangent and cotangent. So I'm just going to put a little note up there for myself. Okay, so um, now I've got cosecant of theta is negative 5 over 2. I can use one of the reciprocal identities right out of the box. So I know that cosecant of theta um, is e equal to 1 over sine of theta. So these are reciprocals of one another. So if I take the reciprocal negative 2 over 5, that'll be the value of sine of theta. So OK, we're, we're good to go there. And so next, I, I really want to use identities that maybe don't have more than two trig functions in them. So I think it's best to use either like this Pythagorean identity or, or this one to help you figure out the, the next value. And I, I just, I don't know, I guess I like the first one the most. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and write that out. So I've got sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, this equals 1. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the value of sine of theta. So that's negative 2 over 5 squared plus cosine squared theta, this equals 1. So ultimately, I get that cosine squared theta is going to equal 1 minus 4 over 25. So cosine squared theta is going to equal 21 over 25. And so then I get cosine of theta is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 21 over the square root of 25. Okay, so I always write the plus or minus, and then this is where that, that quadrant information comes in, and this is why I just gave myself this little cheat sheet here. So I know just by looking at this that this needs to be negative, so I'll go ahead and just switch this to something negative. So the value of cosine of theta in this case is going to be the negative square root of 21 over 5. Okay, so let's, let's clear a little space here and then keep going. So now that I know the value of cosine of theta, then I also get for free, or not for free, but I, I know that it's one of my reciprocal identities. So the value of secant of theta is going to be 1 over cos cosine of theta. So now I can just take the reciprocal. So this will be negative 5 over the square root of 21. I do need to rationalize. So this will be negative 5 square root of 21 over 21. So now I've got the value of secant theta. So now we've just got to find the value of tangent. OK, so for finding the value of tangent, so now you have options. Um, you can use a quotient identity. You can use Pythagorean identities. You can use whatever you want. Um, I Let's see. Why don't I just use one of the quotient identities? Because I think in the first video, I did not use that one. So I'll just show you that it can, it can be done. So here's the value of sine of theta, negative 2 over 5. And then I need to put that over the value of cosine of theta. So that's negative square root of 21 over 5. So if you're going to do this, then you're going to inevitably want to turn this into a division problem. And I'm writing out all the steps just so that I don't make a mistake. So then I can just flip this to get the reciprocal. So then I can see that my 5s cancel out. So I'm left with 2 over the square root of 21. And then I have to rationalize that. So the value of tangent of theta is going to equal 2 times the square root of 21 over 21. So there's that identity. Let me clear a little space. And sorry, I said identity. I meant value. And then for cotangent of theta, so then I can really just flip this to write square root of 21 over 2. And now I'm good. OK, so moving on to B here. So I've got secant of theta equals 7 over 2. 
and I've got tangent of theta is less than zero. Okay, so this tells you that tangent of theta is negative, right? So in what quadrants is tangent of theta negative, but secant of theta positive? So I need the quadrant where tangent of theta is negative and secant of theta is positive because this is a positive value. Okay, so all students take calculus. So you might wanna remember, so if secant of theta is positive, then that would mean that also cosine of theta would be positive, right? So those go hand in hand. So where cosine is positive but tangent is negative, um, all students take calculus, that would be where the, in the fourth quadrant, cosine is the only function that's negative and tangent is, uh, blah, 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 blah. cosine of theta is the only trig function and secant theta where that are positive in quadrant four and tangent of theta would be negative. So I'm gonna write here, this is quadrant four. So cosine and secant are positive. So I've got those little notes there for myself. Okay, so um, now we can go forward with this. So I can, of course, pretty quickly figure out what cosine of theta is because I'm just gonna use my good old reciprocal identity. So I can literally just take the reciprocal. Um, secant of theta and cosine of theta, those are reciprocals of one another. So I can rewrite this as two over seven, no problem. And then um, you guys know me, I, I just like to stay very consistent when I'm setting these up, quite honestly. So I like using this identity just cause I'm, I'm a creature of habit. So I've got um, sine of squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. So then I can plug in that value of cosine squared. So I have sine squared theta plus two over seven squared equals one. So I get sine squared theta is gonna equal one minus four over 49. So I have sine squared theta is gonna equal, um, let's see, 45 over 49. So then I'll have that sine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 45 over the square root of 49. And so now I have to remember we are in quadrant four, so only cosine and secant are positive. Therefore, this will be negative. So I will just change this to a negative. So I have secant of the sine of theta is equal to negative square root of 45 over seven. Cool. All right, so let's clear a little space. And now I can get cosecant of theta. This is equal to negative seven over the square root of 45. So then if I rationalize this, I get negative seven over, the, uh, uh, let me give myself more space here. Um, negative seven square root of 45 over 45. So there I am rationalized. So let me, let me write that. I'll write that right here. Negative seven square root of 45 over 45. And so now we just have to find the values of tangent and cotangent. Um, again, totally up to you how you wanna do this. The last problem I used the, the um, quotient identity. This time, why don't I use, um, how about I use a Pythagorean identity? So I'll use tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta, just, just to change it up. So I've got tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. So now I get tangent squared theta plus one is gonna equal, let me just square this, seven over two squared. So I get tangent squared theta is gonna equal 49 over four minus one, therefore tangent of theta, let's see, I'll say tangent squared theta equals 45 over four. So tangent of theta is gonna equal plus or minus the square root of 45 over four, square root of four. So is this gonna be positive or negative? Well, we know that we are in quadrant four, therefore it's gonna be negative. So tangent of theta is equal to negative square root of 45 over two. Okay, so now I can find cotangent, so I'll clear some space. 
Okay, and finally, um, cotangent of theta. So then I can just take the reciprocal. So I get negative 2 over the square root of 45. And then I could rationalize that to negative 2 square root of 45 over 45. Okay, so we have this. I do want to mention one last thing um, because I was just kind of working with like the the largest square root just to start, just to keep things simple to evaluate. But the square root of 45 can actually be simplified, right? So if I wanted to do that, um, so let's talk about the square root of 45. So the square root of 45, this equals the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. So this actually equals 3 times the square root of 5. Okay, so um, I could simplify this then. So instead of this being square root of 45, I could rewrite this as 3 times the square root of 5. Same thing here, right? This would be 3 times the square root of 5. And then that might kind of arrange how we think of our other two functions. So I've got cosecant and cotangent. So if I wanted to use these new formats that I just came up with, so let me erase what I had before. So just to show you another possibility here, if you, and I think most times you're probably going to have to rationalize, um, then I can go ahead and so just take the reciprocal of this. So this would be negative 7 over 3 times the square root of 5. And then what would you do here? To rationalize, you would multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 5, just the square root. So you'd have cosecant of theta is going to equal negative 7 times the square root of 5 over 3 times 5. So that's 15, oh, 3 times 5. So 3 times 5 is just 15. So I can just write this as 15. Because the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 just equals 5. And then um, similarly with cotangent, so if I, if I did that same trick, negative 2 times 2 over the square root of 3 times 5. So I'd have to rationalize. So I multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 5. So I'd get negative 2 times the square root of 5 over 15. And those would um, be the most simplified forms of those trig functions. So it kind of just depends on um, final answer format. If you're in my class, um, you would have to go through and just simplify like that. But just wanted to show you kind of all the different ways you could approach this one. And um, okay, so yeah, so that, that brings us to the end of this example video. So hopefully that was helpful. If you got any questions, feel free to um, leave them in the comments. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.